Why does my channel exist? We're going to dive deeper into the Trump case and little Lindsey Graham is making his case for perpetual war. Stay tuned, everybody. Hey, the best meat you have ever eaten. Check out samsbutchershop.com. Go and shop around. When you go to checkout, enter the promo code TRIPLE-T for a 5% discount. Check it out. Hello, everybody. This is Trailer Trash Tim. How's your mama and them? Welcome to our channel this bright Tuesday morning. I'm going to upload this video fairly early because later on this morning, I'll be appearing on the Duran channel. I invite you all to join in with me there. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but I got a lot to cover uh, and I didn't know uh, how much free time I'll have this afternoon. So I wanted to go ahead and hit this uh, now if I can. I got a lot on my plate, so let's get going. I want to start uh, by addressing this question. Why does this channel exist? Why is there a Trailer Trash Tim YouTube channel? Well, I'm going to tell you why that is right now, and it's going to be uh, the reason why a lot of channels with similar content exist. I came across this statistic uh, on businessinsider.com, I was already aware of this uh, statistic, but they put up a, an interesting story and in a, in a uh, graph that goes along with the, sto with the story. And basically the graph says this, media has never been more consolidated. Six media giants now control a staggering 90% of what we read, watch, or listen to. Let me break this down for you. Six media giants on them all. General Electric, number one. General Electric, among their holdings are Comcast, NBC, Universal uh, Pictures, and Focus Features. Secondly, you have the News Corp. News Corp owns Fox, uh, the Wall Street Journal, and the New York Post. Then you have good old Disney. We get such good, fine, wholesome content from Disney, right? Don't give Disney any of your money, folks. Boycott them. Uh, Disney owns, of course, ABC, ESPN, Pixar, Miramax, and the Marvel Studios. Let me see if I can adjust my camera. I was a little crooked there. I apologize. That's that. Those are the Disney holdings. Then you have Viacom. Viacom owns MTV, wholesome channel there, uh, Nick Jr., BET, CMT and Paramount Pictures. Then we move on to number five, Time Warner. Time Warner owns CNN, HBO, Time, and Warner, <coughs> pardon me, and Warner Brothers, of course. And then number six is CBS. CBS owns Showtime, the Smithsonian Channel, uh, NFL.com, Jeopardy, and 60 Minutes. So the point is, Six corporations control 90% of all media. <clears throat> Pardon me. The point is this. The American media and American news is a corporate product. It's packaged, it's slick, it's highly produced, and it is presented to the consumer in many instances as news, legitimate news. And I contend it is not. There is a lot of collusion in the news business. It's not really news. It's all prepackaged, formulaic, talking heads puking out the synchronized content that you hear on your cable TV or, or, or your satellite TV or your radio or what have you. Uh, it's, it's basically the same content given to us by these six corporations that control 90% of the media. This uh, Then you see the free market at play because we, what we have in response to that are channels such as this one. A minor channel, granted, but it is a channel. I'm one of those people who finally had it up to here with this prepackaged nonsense, this fake news as the pres president ac ac accurately uh, labels them. And I personally said, I've had enough. I've got to do something. Thus, the Trailer Trash Tim channel. I am one of many alternative voices out there that is presenting to you the news from as honest and objective as an, of an angle as I can possibly uh, present it. I do not have any other bias uh, present except for this. I have one motive, 
one priority, ladies and gentlemen, that is the truth. The truth and the truth alone. Even if I don't agree with what's going on, I want the truth. And I believe most Americans, most Westerners, most people of the world, because I have people watching all over the world, they just want to hear the truth. Now, you don't have to agree with everything that I say, but I'm not edited. I don't have a producer hanging over me. I don't have a corporate board hanging over me, giving me a script to read. I don't have anybody telling me, here's what you're going to say. Present it in as just a slick and professional manner as you can. I don't have that. Now we have channels out there like my channel. We have the Duran. We have Alex Christoforu. We have... <clears throat> uh, Alexander Mokris, we, we had uh, Gonzalo Lyris until they threw him in jail. We have uh, the Liberty P Report, Dr. Paul's channel, and on and on and on it goes. We're sprouting up everywhere in response to this because if 90% of our news is controlled by six corporations, what are the odds you're going to get the truth? I mean, all of these corporations, by and large, spout the same line. Just as an example, Every one of them are all in on the prevailing narrative regarding the war in Ukraine. If you get your news from these people, you're not going to get the truth. Thank the another one I should have mentioned, Tucker Carlson, who's calling it like he sees it. Whether you agree with him or not, he is unfiltered. He is uncensored. He is giving us his version of the truth. I'm, I'm a free market guy. I like the free market of, um, of retail, of, of business, and I love the free market of ideas. Let people talk <clears throat> and let the consumer decide what they agree with or what they believe or where they get their information. That's what my channel is all about, just the dissemination of the truth, at least as I see it. Again, you don't have to agree with what I say. I don't mind that at all. If you disagree, some of you do disagree with me in the comments, and that's fine. I don't mind it. I'm not threatened by it. You are free to have your own ideas and your own opinions, and as am I. And I disseminate the information as I see it. That's why this channel exists, all right? So it should be insulting to you. I think it's vulgar. I think it is obscene that 90% of our news is packaged for us by six corporations like it's some product in a grocery store or something that you just accept as truth. You know what? You know what's so appealing about it? It's just easy. You just accept what they say and you don't have to do any homework. You just, well, I heard it on the news last night. It must be true. Must it? Or do you need to dig for the truth? Do you need to put a little bit of effort uh, in gaining the truth. Let me tell you, the truth is like digging for a pearl, a priceless pearl. You got to dig to find it. It takes some effort. It takes some work, but it's worth it just to get to the truth. All right, let's go on. I've got to get, I've got several things I want to cover if I can. Uh, I want to get to, uh, well, let me get this out of the way real quick because I'm going to spend some time on something else. Uh, this was in the UK Daily Mail and it is with regard to charge stations, which exist to recharge batteries in EVs, electric vehicles. Listen at this headline from the UK Daily Mail. Now marshals, now marshals are being brought in to police charge rage rows between electric vehicle drivers. Boss of Britain's biggest motorway service reveals long waits for plug-in points are making motorists angry and stressed. And the article goes on and on. You can find this in the Daily Mail, uh, .uk, news, dot slash news, what have you. This ties in line with what I've been telling you about uh, EVs. Whether you want to drive an EV or not is your business. If you want to buy one, if you want to drive one, have at it. I got no problem with that. What I do have is a problem with government-backed mandates. What I do have is a problem with bureaucrats saying, by the year 2030, 50% of EV production or 50% of vehicle production will be uh, EVs. It will be electric vehicles, which is absurd on its face. If for only this reason, forget what the market demands, that's legitimate, but I won't get into that. If for only this reason, I have maintained we do not have the infrastructure, hello, to accommodate 50% of domestic manufacturing being EVs on the road. We don't have the infrastructure for that. As we see, I related a story a few weeks ago 
about uh, Jennifer Granholm, I believe it was, a secretary, I believe, of... Um, uh, she's not... Uh, she's not transportation. That would be booty buddy. Anyway, she's a member of the Biden cabinet and she got in, she got a little caravan together with several EV vehicles and she was going to caravan from Charlotte, North Carolina to Memphis, Tennessee. Well, they had to stop to charge these things and they, and somebody on their staff in a gas powered vehicle blocked access to a charging station enraging other motorists who needed to charge their, ba their batteries, but they couldn't because a bureaucrat who is far more important than us common folks had to access the charging station for her all-important EV, which was a Cadillac Lyric, don't you know? So the point is, there aren't enough pedestals, there aren't enough charging stations, and by the year 2030, there still will not be enough uh, charging stations to accommodate all the EVs. The fact of the matter is the market is not demanding them in that volume. The government should simply back off and stop issuing mandates and let the markets work. Period. All right, let me move on. I've got to get to this judge, Arthur Ingeron, because I want to cover... <coughs> the, <coughs> pardon me. I want to cover... Let me get a sip of water if you don't mind. I want to cover this particular civil trial that uh, the president is involved in in New York with Judge Arthur Ingeron. I showed you his picture the other day. He looks like Scrooge. Man, what a prize this guy is. He's already on record as having total contempt for Trump. He hates Trump. But the gist of the case, the civil case against Trump is this, according to Judge Arthur. Uh, he is saying that, tr uh, that Trump overinflated the value of his properties so as to obtain favorable loans from banks. That's the gist of the suit against him. This is also the judge who valued Mar-a-Lago at $18 million. I know a little bit about this. Uh, you may remember the late Rush Limbaugh. He had a home on Palm Be in Palm Beach in Central Florida, right on the ocean. And his home, after his death, sold, uh, I know it was well in excess of $150 million. Now, it was a nice place, but it wasn't Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago has the distinction of being a historical residence. Now it is also the home of a president, which automatically makes the value exponentially higher. Uh, I have seen values placed on Mar-a-Lago in the neighborhood of $500 million and more. So for the judge to say it's worth $18 million is completely absurd. This guy does, not, he's just an absolute bozo. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But the point of the whole matter is this. When anybody goes to the bank to get a home loan, I've done this a few times. I bet a lot of you have as well. <clears throat> The bank, it has been my experience, <clears throat> is meticulous. The underwriters, the loan officers are meticulous in valuing the property in question. They want to know everything about it. They want to see an inspection done on the property. They may want to see a survey done on the property. They want to look at uh, comparable values of properties around the property in question. The bottom line is they do their due diligence. They do their homework. And by the time you get to the table to sign the papers, they know what the value of your property is worth. And so for this judge to, to charge that Trump was overinflating his personal wealth or the value of these properties is patently absurd. There is no way in hell that these banks are, were going to issue loans to Donald Trump if he overinflated the value. These banks knew the value of the properties in question. Believe me, they knew the, the value of the property. They also knew who they were dealing with. They were dealing with a man who knows how to make money. And that's why they issued the loan. So this judge is just an idiot. I mean, he's just an ignorant, blooming, privileged idiot who got his position because of his connections. It's as simple as that. All right, I don't want to dwell on it because I got so much more to cover because I've got to get to little Lindsey Graham. Oh, little Lindsey, the senator from South Carolina, the neocon extraordinaire, the man who salivates and bedwets over the prospect of perpetual war. Lindsey Graham loves the notion of America at war. He cannot stand the thought that for one second we may not be involved in some conflict around the world. You remember, he was the dutiful ward of the late 
king of the neocons, John McCain. But wait, he was a good Republican, I thought. Eh, come on, uniparty, uniparty. So ne uh, neocon extraordinaire Lindsey Graham appeared this weekend on Face the Nation here in the States. And I want you to take note. I wish I had a picture of it. As he was being interviewed, you could notice the suit that Lindsey Graham was wearing. On his lapel, what do you think he was? He had displayed? You guessed it. The Ukrainian flag was on Lindsey Graham's lapel. Okay? Now, he's a United States senator, which makes you, which begs the question, where are your loyalties, Senator, with the, the U.S., who you uh, purport to represent, or is your loyalty really with Ukraine? I got an idea. Why don't you go and run for a political position in Ukraine? That'd be a better fit for you, I do believe, Lindsay, little Lindsay. Oh, this guy. <clears throat> but this is what I want to get to. Lindsay hit all the talking points of the neocons on Face the Nation. Nothing but a swath of lies. These people lie. They lie. They lie. They lie. All they do is lie. They are e either idiots who simply don't know better, but that's just not possible in this case, or they are simply evil people. Bing, 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 bing. Lindsey Graham, a war-loving neocon extraordinaire, he said to date that, uh, well, get this. He, This just blows me away, folks. I'm telling you the truth. You remember that Joe Biden, the hapless president of the United States who's flushing us all down the toilet, he has requested $24 billion more in aid for Ukraine. That's not good enough for Lindsey Graham. Oh, that's just a drop in the bucket. Lindsey Graham told the interviewer on Face the Nation, over the next year, we will be funding at least 60 to 70 b -b 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 billion more dollars for Ukraine. That's right, boys and girls. $70 billion for Ukraine, which probably makes... Even Joe Biden go, damn, dude, I didn't even ask for that. But, of course, I'll take it. 70, I mean, the sky's the limit. It, it, it doesn't matter. Why not ask for a trillion dollars, Lindsay? I mean, it's only money that we can print, right? Unbelievable. The nation that is $32 trillion in debt, but somehow we can find a way to put $70 billion in a Christmas card and send it to uh, Zelensky. Yeah, that's no problem here, right? Oh, by the way, Lindsay, I noticed on the interview you gave Face the Nation, you didn't say a damn thing about the American border, you lunatic. How about five cents for the Rio Grande River? Anything there, Lindsay? Do you care anything about your own country, Senator? United States Senator? $70 billion for Ukraine is what he said. He said uh, included in our aid to Ukraine would be F-16s, tanks, and uh, HIMARS, or HIMARS, which is an acronym for High Mobility Rocket Systems. Uh, he also said, <clears throat> he would love that, right? <clears throat> How do you think Russia would respond to that? You think I'd say, yeah, that's no problem there. What are you doing, Lindsay? You got it. You, he's, he is just, he's got, having wet dreams, ladies and gentlemen, of World War III. He wants it so bad he can't hardly stand it. I'm sure he's already got his bunker packed out with water and food and two-way radios and what, everything he needs. He'd be fine. He's a senator from South Carolina, by George. He said on this broadcast, <laughs> he said 50% of the Russian army has been destroyed by the Ukrainians. That is a bald-faced lie. It's nowhere near the truth. And it's difficult for me to believe that little Lindsay doesn't know that. It is nothing but pure propaganda from this little bedwetting neocon. Also in this interview, Lindsay identified Russia as the villain of World War II. Now here again, <clears throat> he is either completely evil or he is a liar or... He simply does not know his history. A rudimentary study of World War II would reveal a vastly different story about the Russian involvement in the Second World War, 
which Russia refers to as the Great Patriotic War. I commend to you a wonderful book, uh, ladies and gentlemen, by an author by the name of Max Hastings, who is a British historian. The title of the book, available on Amazon, is Inferno, The World at War, 1939 to 1945. Now, uh, Mr. Hastings is a British citizen, all right? <clears throat> He's a historian. He's not a Russian. But he notes a lot of things uh, in this book that probably a lot of Americans have not uh, been aware of uh, because I can guarantee you we were not taught this in the government indoctrination centers, otherwise known as public schools, government schools, while we grew up. And a lot of you people in the West may not know of it e uh, either. Uh, Russia refers to uh, World War II as the Great Patriotic War, War, and here's why. When Americans think of our success in World War II, and we did have success. I'm not ragging on the United States here, folks. We had our successes. Normandy, Iwo Jima. We had a lot of really great patriotic Americans that fought and died in the Second World War, <clears throat> including my father, I might add. But there's another angle to this war that a lot of us have not ever been privy to that Mr. Hastings notes uh, in his book. How many of you know that Russia was also involved in the Second World War? And how many of you know who Russia also fought in the Second World War? Those. That's who Russia fought against and defeated in the Second World War. Now, America did too, but Russia did too. And I want to give you some more details about that. And, and what the, the loss, Russian losses were in the Second World War, are you aware that 26 million Russian citizens were killed in the Second World War fighting against Germany? 11 million of these fatalities were soldiers. 11 million Russian soldiers died fighting in the Second World War. Let me give you a ratio. For every one American soldier that was killed in the Second World War, for every soldier, one soldier, one American soldier killed in the Second World War, 80 Russian soldiers were killed in the Second World War. So the fact of the matter is, Lindsey Graham needs to go crack a book for once and get some knowledge into his pea-sized brain. Russia defeated these in the Second World War, Lindsey in case you didn't know it. Then again, maybe Lindsay is on their side. Hmm, could that be a possibility? Well, think about it. He's supporting Ukraine, the Ukrainian regime, the Zelensky regime, who is aiding and abetting these. They are in bed with these. This is who Putin is fighting. This is who Russia is fighting against again. And Lindsay is supporting them. To the tune of seventy billion more dollars, unbelievable, unbelievable! What this man is doing. All right, let me get to one last thing, and we'll conclude. Kiki is on the other side of the camera. Stay over there, sweetheart. Maybe you've heard of this. The uh, UK has a defense secretary who is a prize. You folks watching me in the UK, you've got to love this guy. This is a man by the name of Grant Shapps. And Gramps, I'm not going to go through all of it because it's long and detailed, but Grant Shapps said uh, a few days ago that he want, in essence, he says that he wants to put British troops and advisors, British boots on the ground in Ukraine. He wants British troops on Ukrainian soil. Now, his predecessor backed off from that, but I'm going to tell you this thing blew up uh, particularly with the Prime Minister of Russia, Medvedev, who said, among, among other things, he said this in response to Secretary Shapps. He said, if British troops are on the ground in Ukraine, they are legitimate targets for destruction. I'm going to tell you folks something. Russia ain't playing. And we would do well to wake up and wake up right now. You get the sense that Putin is basically saying, bring it on. You want to go there? We'll go there. Uh, Russia means business in Ukraine. They are going to cleanse that country, God willing, of these. 
with or without our help. And of course, we're not about to help them because we're on this side, the American government, not the people, not the Americans who are awake and know what's going on, but the American government by and large is on the side of these people, not the Rand Pauls of the world, not the Mike Lees of the world, not the Thomas Masseys of the world, but by and large, every politician in the cesspool of Washington, D.C. is on the side of these people in Ukraine, and they want to give them 70 more of our hard-earned taxpayer dollars to prop up these. God, it's unbelievable. And Putin is saying, you want British boots on the, dry, on the ground? Bring it on. You want to play? Let's play. That's what he's saying. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. That This is why Shap's predecessor was backing off and saying, hold it, buddy. Pull back on the reins here. Lindsey Graham is an idiot. And if he wants to give $70 billion more to Ukraine, and if he wants to give F-16s to Ukraine and tanks to Ukraine and HEMARS to Ukraine... It is his wet dream again, undoubtedly, to put American troops in Ukraine. These people, these blithering idiots like Lindsey Graham and Grant Shapps are pushing us to the brink of World War III. This is why the Trailer Trash Tim channel exists, so that I can get my word out, my tr this truth out to as many people as I can. This is why the Duran exists. This is why the Ron Paul channel exists. This is why the Gonzalo Lira did, channel did exist. This is why Tucker Carlson is giving you the truth on his channel. And on and on and on it goes. Alex Christoforo, every day he is pointing out the inconsistencies and the lies that we are living under. It's unbelievable and we've had it up to here. Folks, do me a favor. Share this video. Get the word out. These voices have got to be heard. Our voices, the voices of the alternative media have got to be seen as the alternative to the six corporations that control 90% of all the media that we consume. We are swimming in lies. We need the truth. And I am committed to disseminating as much of the truth as I possibly can. Be, possibly can. Lies be damned. I'm tired of lies. I'm tired of lies. I'm tired of a government that lies to me on a daily basis. And I've had enough. And I believe you have too. So share this video with as, as many people as you possibly can. Please do me a favor. If, if, if you felt hopeless like I did one time and you feel like you don't have a voice, you do have a voice. It's channels just like this, but I need your help. Please like this video. Please give me the thumbs up on this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you will so that I can continue to put the word out <clears throat> to the best of my ability. I, all of you know I work a full-time job and this is becoming at least a part-time job, but I don't care. It's a labor of love and I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to get uh, as much truth out as I can to as many ears and eyes as I can find. All the relevant links are down below. The, the uh, Buy me a coffee, the, the uh, PayPal, the, the, uh, the email address, all that jazz is down below. If you want to contact me, uh, you are more than welcome to. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I'll see you later this morning on the Duran. Everybody have a great Tuesday. This is Trailer Trash Tim. I will see you tomorrow.